All right, so in this video, we're going to walk through um, the updates that have been made to the condominium development model. Now, for every update I make, I probably won't do a video um, unless it's substantial enough. And since it's been at least a couple of months since I've updated this model, I decided it was worth a video just to walk through all of our changes. Um, so what we're going to do in this video, um, if you've opened the model, um, and you've come to this versions tab, you'll see we have all of the updates here. I'm going to walk through um, each of these uh, each of these line items. And if you have not yet um, downloaded the model or you've come here via YouTube, you can go to the description below and click in the link and you can download the model there. Or if you're on our website, uh, please just go ahead and download the model first and then we can continue along with the video. All right, so the first line item we have here is we have done an overall aesthetic update. So our previous model looked like this. Um, it's not much different. Um, really, it's just colors and font style. Um, just wanted to make it, you know, a little bit more attractive looking. And the next thing we did here is we updated the sources and uses on the summary tab. Um, so you can now review it in a per unit, per gross square foot, and per sellable square foot basis. So if you come across here, you see we've added, um, you know, these three line items. And it's in the previous version, you see we've only had just the aggregate total. So that's another update. Um, next, down there, we have a cost revenue analysis also on a per unit per gross square foot and per sellable square foot basis as well. So we just added that, these three columns as well, as opposed to just having it here on a per sellable square foot. Um, inputs tab. So here we have the ability now to manually fill in the unit type within the stacking plan and it'll auto calculate in the summary. And so here you can see you have your, your stacking plan. And then as you update, I mean, let's say we want 25 one beds, for example, it will come up here and it'll update automatically in this program section. Um, whereas before you were basically filling it out up here. And so it kind of, there was a little bit of a disconnect. So I wanted to add the units here and, and sort of make this all more, more married. And then our next update was the date of closing pre-sales is now linked to the end of construction. So before um, you were able to put your date of closing pre-sales and it wasn't tied um, with construction. So maybe you're updating the model, you're updating dates and you just forgot to come in here and change it. So maybe this pushes out a year and then you have your closing dates, you know, uh, a month after construction starts or something like that. So I, I, wanted to make it more uh, connected. And so that way it would be less room for error and they would always flow. So if you're updating dates, the closing date and construction timing would be um, more in sync. And so you can see here, this is linking to summary C27 and that's construction completion. Now, if you ever wanted to update this and maybe you're closing it before, or maybe, you know, people can occupy earlier and you can close, you can always come in here and say, you know, I want, you know, the closing of pre-sales to happen six months uh, before, right? So what you can always do is create a formula, you do an e-date, and this is the start of closing, and then you say, I want it six months before, you'll add a negative six, and then it'll update accordingly. And so that at this point, you're now closing six months before. So, um, you know, you can always come in here and update the formulas as you need. And then if you're going to do that, obviously you'd want to come up here and change this note where it says construction complete completion and maybe change it to say, you know, six months prior to construction completion. Um, okay. Let's keep moving here. So we up updated the interest projections so that you can now copy in a benchmark curve projection, such as LIBOR, um, in the cash flow tab, and then simply put in the basis, uh, point spread in this section. So what I'm talking about here is in this section right here, we have the interest rate. Um, so it's LIBOR plus 300 basis points. Now you'll notice the text is here, but we have a number here. So let's say your LIBOR plus 250. So you can always update that. And so what happens is I'm going to move down to our cash flow tab. So we come down to our draw schedule. And here you're going to put in, in this example, our LIBOR curve projection, which I just threw in a, 
steady 1.25%. I didn't put an actual LIBOR curve projection, but you could you come in here and you just copy and paste that in. We have our basis points you know, above the curve, and then we have our actual interest rate. Whereas before, I think it was a little clunky. We just put interest rate LIBOR plus 300, and there was no real connection in to our cash flow tab. And so when we came down to our draw schedule, we were just laying in our interest rate. So we would have to do, you know, LIBOR plus whatever, uh, LIBOR plus whatever our basis point spread is, and it would just be a little messy and confusing. And here you can see I'm just putting eight basis points above uh, whatever whatever the 3.7% was, and it's growing at eight basis points just to mimic a sort of curve plus basis points. So, I eliminated that and now it's just very, it's very straightforward. Copy your LIBOR curve in and you come back to your inputs and you put in whatever the basis point spread is. All right, so moving on to the budget tab, like we did with our summary tab, we added a little more detail and let's move in. So previously we had just uh, the aggregate total and the per sellable square foot. Now we're doing it on per unit, per gross square foot, per sellable square foot, and we still have our total. All right, so we'll keep moving on here. So our cash flow tab revamped, simplified, and cleaned up. Um, so I can show you before what was going on. This is the whole cash flow tab. There's everything you need. In the previous version, we had a lot more, and I thought unnecessary line items. So we can close all this up. Uh, by the way, if you are, um, that we cover all the detail here in this in this detail uh, in these detail line items in the other video. There's one ad which we'll go we'll go um, over after I cover this specific topic. Um, so we have our unlevered, our levered, our draw schedule. Um, and so what I did was, if you notice, these line items are the same. So, you know, unit sold, condo, HOA fees, condo, HOA fees. And so all I did is I combined that up here. Um, and so we didn't need to do that. And then I just put unlevered cash flow and the total lever cash flow at the bottom under the draw schedule. So it's a lot cleaner. Um, there's a, eliminated a lot of the repetition here. Um, and so it just, it just feels cleaner and looks better and still does the same thing. All right, so moving on. So one of the things I added in the detailed um, line items is you have the ability to project each line item using a bell curve, which you could do before, um, but I've added a steady growth formula as well now. So for example, let's open up our hard costs and let's just, uh, we'll just take, let's take structure just so we can actually visualize it here and let's move it from one to periods one to seven. So we have our structure here from one to seven and you'll notice that it's going in a bell curve, you know, 415.4 thousand goes up to 439,000 comes back to 415.4 thousand. Um, and so that's all we were able to do before was we had this, uh, oops, we were able to have a bell curve and we could make it steep, moderately steep, moderate, moderately flat, so on and so forth. Or we could do it as a straight line or we could do it custom. Um, but here now we have the ability, we have this drop down, we can do a steady growth. So this will grow the cash flow steady over the month. So here you can see in month one, we have $107,000 and it grows steadily up to $750,000 for the last payment. And collectively that still equals the 3 million, which is our budget. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I thought that was a cool and important functionality to add to this. So you now have that ability. Um, and then we talked about this in the inputs tab where you have the ability to update the interest projection. And actually that's really it. So everything else is the same. Um, so you can go back to the original video and watch the updates. And then as I had said before, um, in other videos and as well as in the, the post that the waterfall tab is covered in a separate uh, page and in a separate video as well. And I'll link to both of these in, in the description.
Um, so that is really it. And I hope that this model, this updated model is now even more helpful for you. And, you know, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any suggestions or you want ads and, you know, we'll keep track of all this and keep updating this model in the future. So thanks for watching.